about um, 140 Coleraine Road, which is this location. I am particularly, in, in some respects, yes, talking about it, but the church is not just us. The church is all who have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, regardless of their skin color, their nationality, or the denomination or church they belong to. Amen. So, we are the church. Now, particularly, we, we talk about our local group, yes, and I love this local group of believers as well. And you and I are part of, we're an integral part of the larger church. Can you hear me say amen? Now, our love for the church is not just in words only. Because our love for the church cannot be just words only. Brothers, you cannot tell your wife, I just love you and take my word for it. In fact, the Bible often depicts, you know, the church uh, and, and a marriage situation. We have to show her that we love her. And we must show the church that we love the church. And you've just done that. You've done that by being here today. You've done that by supporting with your time, your treasure, your talents. You do that because you love the church. And we love the church because of who the head of the church is. It was not just a good idea. The church was God's idea. And the church will continue to be God's idea until He sends His Son Jesus to get the church that 2,000 years ago He sent to redeem the church. It's all about the church. Jesus come to, to put us back in relationship with His Father, and then He told the church, I'm going to go away and I'm going to prepare a place for you, but I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So the Bible tells me that the Lord is coming back for a church. He's coming back for a group of people, an ecclesia, a called out group that has been called out from among the world that is literally the salt of the earth and the light of the world. He's coming back for us. Amen. And I'm looking forward to it. I, I had an opportunity to talk to an old man this past week. He left Tanya a message. His name is Tom Waters. He may watch this by video uh, in a few days, but um, he was my associate pastor in my last church, a great man of God, and he said to me in a very strong voice, although his health is failing him, he said, Brother Mike, he said, you know I love you and I have for many years, and he said, if the time comes, he said, believe me, I'm looking for the Lord to come in my lifetime. I'm believing the Lord's coming while I'm living. He said, but if the time comes and I leave the walks of this life, and he has not come yet. I want you to preach my funeral. I said, Brother Tom, you can guarantee one thing. If the Lord has not yet returned, and I'm still able and available, and you pass before me, I will preach your funeral. And then I will look for the day of the return of the Lord, and I'll see you on that side. Amen. I had that conversation this week. Amen. <coughs> Let me turn your attention today to a message title the Lord has laid upon my heart. Adam came up with a song actually um, months ago. He submitted it to uh, Brother Mike, and we began looking at it and trying to play it and all that. It's called Unstoppable God. And I said, that's kind of a, a neat thing because I'm going to preach a message in that series entitled The Church Unstoppable. Now, the church is unstoppable because our God is unstoppable. Are you with me? Say amen. The Bible says, this is what Jesus said, and I probably should have taken this as a primary text, that upon this rock, Jesus said, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we live in a time where all hell is coming against the church but Jesus said it will not prevail against the church. Listen to me. We're going to undergo some hard times as a church. It's going to get harder and harder as we see the day of the Lord approaching. But let me say this to you. If we will stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, He will see us through until He comes and raptures the church out of this dreadful world. Give Him praise. <laughs> Turn with me if you have your Bible to the Old Testament, uh, the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, chapter number 4, I want to read verses 1 through 10. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. 
And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I'm looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it and a stand, uh, and the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. And two olive trees are by it, one on the right of the bowl and the other at its left. I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me. Zerubbabel said, what are these, my Lord? What are these? Uh, the angel who talked to me said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. So he answered and he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. Who are you? Now, now I want you to understand this before I read further. What you've got to know is Zerubbabel was in the process of trying to rebuild the temple that had been destroyed by the Babylonians. He was struggling, in, and let me tell you this, in all the modern day era and the equipment that we've got, I can imagine the struggle. I know what I went through, and I could only imagine what Zerubbabel went through back then. But the angel said, do you know what this is? And he says, no, I don't know what it is. Please tell me. And the angel says, it's, it's the word of the Lord unto you, not by might, but by power, but by my spirit. And then Zerubbabel got it. He had that aha moment where he said, aha! And then he looks at his mountain that stands in front of him and says, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall even become a plain. Let me hold on right there. Some of you are going to leave this church today. When we get done at the altar, you're going to turn around with an aha moment and say, Who are you, old uh, mountain that stands before whatever your name is? You shall even become a plain. And though you look real lofty like Mount Everest, you're going to come right on down. And I'm going to walk right on through. O great mountain before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple, and his hands shall also finish it. Let me tell you something, friends. God is able to finish in you what he started in you. The only problem with it is if you give up. God will not give up. He is able to finish in you whatever he's called you to do, sir, ma'am, whatever God has called you to do. Now, if you get weak and give up, now Zerubbabel was weak and tired and wayward, and all of us humans get that way from time to time. We've all got the potential to be discouraged, to get offended, to fall out. Are you all hearing me? All of us have that uh, capacity for it to happen. It is there, but none of us have the right to stay in those depressed, despondent, offended states. Amen? None of us have the right to stay there. Now, the hand of the Zerubbabel has laid the foundation of the temple. His hand shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which can scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Lord, I just ask you now if you would add your blessings to your word. I pray, God, that you would touch me that I might speak with power and authority and anointing. Lord, that I might speak with the tongue of the learned today. God, that I might help somebody who is struggling. Lord, may they understand that we serve in a church unstoppable, filled with people unstoppable, if they'll keep their eyes on you. Amen. The dilemma that he had was daunting. The task at hand was great. The word of the angel that come to Zerubbabel served as a comfort to him that it's going to be all right. That you know, I'm going to be with you, says the Lord, and, and I'm going to give you the strength. And secondly, it informed him of God's plan for him to be the one to complete God's work. Some of us oftentimes get in a, a little sideways with God, and we say, well, maybe this was for somebody else. You know, if God started in you, God can finish it in you. Often I have found that when I need to hear from God the most, it seems like he's furthest away. Are you with me? Say amen. 
We need to hear from Him the most. It seems like we hear from Him the least. But I want to tell you, my friend, today, it is not that God is not listening to you. It is not that God is not speaking. But it is that somehow our ability to hear Him and to comprehend Him has somehow been impaired. God has not been reduced to some small God. His hand, as we learned last week, has not been shortened that it cannot reach down where you are. But sometimes there are things between us and God that just sort of hinders us. I like to use the illustration of the sun and the moon. How many of you know the sun shines bright in the noonday? And then the sun sets in the night and we wonder where it is. And then, but, but the Bible says God created two lights, one great light to rule the day and a lesser to rule the night is the night. And then scientists tell us that the moon is not really indeed a light itself, but it is a reflection of the light. So while it's dark in our time and in our world right here, and the sun has gone down and we cannot see that big light, oh, but we look over and there's a reflection of that light that tells me that that light can see the light. Are you with me? Say amen. And the obstruction lets us, I mean the, the darkness is the obstruction. But when we see the moonlight, we know that it has a direct connection with the sunlight. Amen. And no matter what it is in your life that is obstructing your view, I tell you, God is still there. Amen. It's worth noting that he had to wake the uh, prophet up. He had to wake Zerubbabel up. Uh, he was tired and the work was taking a toll on him. How many of you remember the prophet Elijah? You remember him? He knelt down by a juniper tree and said, Oh God, take away my life. I'm no longer. How many of you remember the prophet Jonah? After he preached and all these 120,000 people gave their heart to the Lord, he sat outside the, 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 he sat outside the city under a gourd that the Lord had created. And he, he cried and he said, Lord, just kill me. You know why? I'm a prophet. I said, uh, hell, fire and brimstone, sulfur's going to rain down. I wanted to see the fireworks show, God. Amen? But those people turned from their wickedness and God healed them and saved them. Listen, no doubt... Uh, uh, we get sleepy, we get tired. Let me, get, let me help you all identify. So Some of you all kind of doubt me. But let me show you. Peter, James, and John, that's the, the, the elite of the disciples. That was the inner circle of Jesus. Do you know what? When Jesus carried them the week before his crucifixion to the Mount Hermon, uh, some call Mount Tabor, this is where God would reveal himself. This is where Jesus would reveal his connection with the Father in, in a very real way to them. It's called the Mount of Transfiguration. He led them up there. There's Jesus, there's Peter, James, and John. And, and Jesus begins to pray. He begins to talk to the Father. And let me tell you something. It's bad for you to fall asleep while I'm praying. But it's really bad if you fall asleep when Jesus is praying. And all of a sudden, all three of them fell asleep. And I don't know how long Jesus talked with the Father, but all of a sudden, there's a shaking. And they wake up and they look at him and the Bible says his clothes is gleaming, sparkling white, whiter than any fuller could white them. They heard the voice of God from heaven. They looked up and said, God said, this is my son. Hear ye him. All of a sudden, Peter woke out of his sleep and said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. May we build three tabernacles. You know, one for you and one for Moses because he came to that meeting. And one for Elijah because he came. All of them there is God the Father. Here's God the Son. Peter, James, and John, Moses, and Elijah, all of them right there. What a place to fall asleep. Them boys had gotten tired. Now, just right before the crucifixion, on the, on the hardest day of the life of Jesus, on the hardest night of his life, when he led that same group, that same three, Peter, James, and John, out to the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, stay right here. I'm going to go a little further and pray. He knelt down and said, oh, Lord, Father, if there's any way, let this bitter cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And uh, then he said, I'm, I'm, I'm willing. I'm ready. He gets up, and he comes back, and there they are, sound asleep. <laughs> he said, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? This happened. They, done, they fell asleep several times. They were just sleepy. They were tired. Now, now back to my message. Zerubbabel was asleep. He was tired. 
<coughs> the Lord says he had fallen asleep. He, he Listen, when we get to this place, we need a revelation from the Lord. And some of you who are so weary right now, you're so weary and so tired, you just want to throw in the white towel and just give up. Today you may even be sleepy right now, your head's just bobbing. I'm trying to wake you up. I want you to feel like you're in good company. Some pretty important people fell asleep in the presence of Jesus. I'm not trying to justify our falling asleep in church, but nonetheless, he woke up and he saw this picture of two olive trees leading and branches coming down to a bowl in the middle. It's filled with oil, and from the bowl are seven lamps. There you go. There's a depiction of it, two olive trees with the bowl, seven lamps. And, and, and he says, Gene, what this means, and he really didn't know what it meant, but let me just give you uh, an indication real quick. If you'll notice what God is literally saying to him here, the olive trees are God's. Man can plant them, man do what it want to, but God causes that tree to grow. And, and just by God's grace and God's nature, oil flows from the tree into the bowl. And by gravity, uh, a law that God put in place, it feeds down out of that bowl to those seven lamps and it burns perpetually. It burns without the service of a man or a woman coming by to pour more oil in. Now, in Exodus, we find that the Levites had charge of the altar, and they were charged with never allowing the flame to go out on the altar of God. But here's a picture where God is trying to tell Zerubbabel. He's trying to encourage him. And here's I'm trying to encourage you today, and I'm going to show you four revelations real quick. But I'm trying to encourage you to understand this. It's coming from God. It's God's oil in that bowl. It flows down through those pipes to those seven lamps, and the fire never goes out. And what he said to to Zerubbabel was, it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. Now, Zerubbabel was dealing with probably people that said they are going to come work on the church and didn't come work. Been there and done that. He's probably doing what people said they were going to give and didn't give. Been there and done that. He's probably being talked with people that said they would do such and such, and they did not do such and such. Been there and done that. He's probably talking about all the letdowns that he's had trying to do kingdom work. And what God gave him a revelation of is this. This is my church, and it is not by the might of men. It is not by the power of men, but it will be established by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Now, let me say this. It, all, it helps us when we all get together. But let me say this. You can abort today. You can run today. You can turn over today. And God's church will continue. Amen. I understand we get personalities all jacked up sometimes and all that. But listen, listen. God's church is going to go with me or without me. Hello. Listen, uh, many of pastors felt like that the church couldn't go without them and the church is still going and they're gone. Amen. Let me say this. Here's the revelation I believe that God was given Zerubbabel. Here's a prelude, a precursor to the church. Now, we understand the church existed in the wilderness. It was a church in the wilderness. They didn't call it that, but that's what it was. So here, this is a precursor because the temple had been destroyed by the Babylonians, and he's trying to build it back, and God is trying to tell him, listen, you're going to be able to do it. I want to tell you this to me because it's New Year's resolution time and you're trying to do something. You've got visions and dreams. Listen, if your vision is not bigger than you can see yourself doing, it's not big enough. That's, what, that's right. If you know how you're going to accomplish it completely right now, it ain't big enough. Don't require any faith. So, the prelude of the church, the vision is the prelude of this church. It's an introduction of the church. The building itself is a, is a type and a shadow. It's the precursor of the church. You see, Jesus would later say in Matthew 16, 17, and 19, or through 19, Jesus answered, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven, I say to you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, not upon Peter, please don't get me wrong, Petros means pebble, But Jesus Christ is the rock of my salvation. He would use Peter, and Peter would become the premier preacher and pastor of the New Testament church on that day when he preached, and 3,000 people gave their heart to the Lord. Are y'all hearing me say amen? Yes. Uh, 
but he says to him, and I'm going to, he says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Watch this. Here it is. He says this to Peter. God is no respecter of persons. If you'll do it for him, he'll do it for you. He said, and I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What he says is this. The things that are hindering you on this earth, bind them in the name of Jesus, and heaven agrees with you, and they are bound. Whatever needs to be loosed in your life, loose it in the name of Jesus. And heaven agrees with you, and it's loosed. Problem is, we don't pray. Oh, thank you, Pastor, for the truth. You're welcome, and we'll move on. The, the prelude for the church, that is a picture of the church, is what that vision was. And then it revealed to him the purpose of the church. Listen, the purpose of the church, let me say these lights that are popping, these seven lamps. The, the purpose of the church is to give light in a darkened world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. The light of God brings truth. And the truth will set you free. The church here is to bring the truth to a dying world. The church is to bring the truth to a dying world, to bring the light to those who are in darkness. It is a church that Jesus built. He said, I am the light of the world and the true light that lighteth every man has come into this world and oh, has become the head of our church. Amen. He is the head of the church. Praise God. That's where the thinking takes place. Are you all with me? Say amen. Listen, we are to spread the light in the assembly of God. Years ago, we had an, uh, an, it's, we have an evangel in the church of God, but we had uh, a magazine. It's called Speed the Light. Where we're trying to send the light of the gospel around the world. It is not our light. It is His light that shines through us. It is much like the moon. It's not the moon's light. It is the sun's light being reflected. Listen, you and I are not lights in and of ourselves. But if the Son of God lives inside of us, we are reflection. Amen. We are ambassadors of Him. We are filled with His radiance. In fact, the Bible said when Moses met Him on Mount Sinai, He came down and He was so filled with the presence and the power of God that he gleamed and radiated so much they had to put a veil over him in order to fulfill our purpose. That is our, the purpose of this church. We're going to show you. There's a card. Here it is. Oh, hallelujah. There's a card right here. It says to reach, to educate, and deploy. That's what I believe God has called the Harbor Worship Center to do, to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ to reach them. And then what do we do with reached people? We educate them. We teach them the word of God. And then we deploy them in kingdom service. Are you hearing me say amen? That is the whole thing that we are fishers of men. We reach them. We educate them. And we deploy them. Hallelujah. Let me say this. Reached people. Reached people. Redeemed people. Uh, reach out for people. So that, that is our deal. We're going to do that. In fact, from henceforth, when you look around and you say, what is the church doing? Why is the church doing it? Because we reach people. Because our job is to educate people. Because our job is to deploy. Let me show you how clear this is. Jesus said that the mission of the church is to go into all the world. And reach them. Teach them all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Huh? In other words, reach and teach. Huh? Reach and educate. I believe that works. Reach and educate. And then deploy them to do works of, of, kingdom, of the kingdom. Are y'all hearing me say amen? We've got to keep the faith. When others give in, we must go on. People are going to walk away. Listen to me. That's just part of it. But we must remain faithful. Simplify. Amen. Forever faithful. The marine motto. God has called us as a church, as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have times in your life where you're going to have people that's going to say goodbye. I'll never forget, there was a king. He was the first king to rule Israel after the judges. His name was, yeah. And uh, Saul just continued there, and uh, he, um, God blessed him. Uh, Samuel had anointed him king, but then he walked away from God. Saul began to do his own thing. And the Bible tells me that Samuel began to pray for the king. And he would weep for him. And finally the Lord asked the prophet one day, and he said, Samuel, Samuel, 
How long will you mourn for Saul? I have rejected him from reigning over my people. Get your hen of oil, cruise of oil, go down to Bethlehem to the house of Jesse. And I have a boy there, by the, he didn't call his name, he said, but I have a man after my own heart. We know it was David, the son of Jesse. I want to tell you something, there will be times when you're doing the kingdom work when people are dragging you down, and as a man or a woman of God, you're just going to have to let them go. You're not mean, you're not crude, you're not ugly to them. You're going to simply say this, my mind is made up, I'm going to do what God wants me to do, and this lifestyle won't get me there. The progress. You see, the light is to never go out. God shows, listen, in this progress, the vision of the church. It is not by might or power, but it's by my spirit. See, even though our enemies are many and mighty, and our friends sometimes are few and feeble. You remember when Nehemiah was building up the wall? How many? I, you, you heard me say this, that people are going to talk. Haters are going to hate. And people are going to always talk negative things about you. But you can't, you got to believe the report of the Lord. Amen? Here's the truth of the matter. The psalmist said it like this. Except the Lord build the house, the builders rise in vain. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchmen rise in vain. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. Unless God is the keeper of our soul, listen, it does us no good. If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? But if we'll submit ourselves to Him, if we'll look to Him, don't you know that the steps of a righteous man or a righteous woman are ordered of the Lord? He said, in all of thy ways acknowledge me, and I shall direct thy paths. Give Him praise, would you? Every obstacle will be removed. Every, uh, every opposition will be taken out. The angel says to Zerubbabel, uh, <clears throat> what this is? No, I don't know what it is. He says, well, it is the word of the Lord to you that it is not by your might. It is not by your power. I want to tell you, some of you have made New Year's resolutions and you said like this. I'm going to get closer to God this year than I've ever been. Some of you said, I'm going to learn more of the Word of God than I've ever learned. I'm going to do something for God greater. I'm going to give more to the Lord this year than I've ever given. I'm going to go on a mission trip this year. I'm going to do thus and so. I'm going to use my talents for the Lord. And the devil has already, just 10 days in, 11 days, whatever it is, hindered you from doing it. And let me say this, if you're going to try to make that resolution happen in your own strength, it ain't happening. You'll be messed up so bad your reading will be off by tomorrow. Huh? Your exercise is probably already off. I can tell by the applause. Unless the Lord builds a house, the builders rise in vain. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman climb the tower in vain. I'm going to tell you, I want the Lord watching over me. I want you to understand something here, especially if you're a guest. This is not my church. Please, don't think it is. This is His church. Amen? This is God's church. And except the Lord watch over the house. How many of you, I don't know if you're familiar, if you're in the military, you might be with a daisy cutter bomb. Some of you know. A daisy cutter will just, when it explodes... It'll just level everything in its path. Y'all hear me? <laughs> and what I'm telling you the Lord is able to do in your life today, let's just say that th I, I'm you, and I'm looking out, and if all of y'all were standing up right now representing obstacles, and you're not, I'm not saying you're an obstacle. But if you were all standing representing an obstacle that, that the devil had put in my life, I'm telling you what the Lord God can do today right here is just drop in your spirit a spiritual daisy cutter and wham! Just like that. Every obstacle is leveled to the ground. And you can walk where you need to walk. And you can go where you need to go. He has the ability to take all of that junk out of your way. Even become a plane. See, 
when we're doing the work of the Lord, he'll send his angel to encourage us like he did Zerubbabel, like he did Daniel, like he did Peter, like he did Elijah. And then last but not least, I want you to realize the promised protection. Not only was that vision a prelude to the church, not only did it show the progress uh, of the church, but it shows us the promised protection of the church. Let me say this. The church belongs to God. We are His children. I'm going to tell you this. There's nothing that you wouldn't do for your children to look after them. Not by might or power, but by my spirit. God is watching over His church. And He's built, He's built as, he, he, just like He watches over Israel. And I want to tell you something. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Would you stand with me now this morning? Here's what I want you to understand as we get in a mindful uh, attitude of prayer. God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity. But God has given us the keys to the kingdom. He will provide a way. He will remove obstacles. He has given us, the Word says, the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Though we are small right now, maybe your vision is small, don't despair and don't despise the day of small things. For God has said, the mustard seed, the smallest among the seeds will become a mighty tree. God has said that a little tiny bit of leaven, it's like baking powder, will make that whole cake rise. A handful of corn on a bleak mountain will yield a waving harvest as the fruit of Lebanon. A cloud about the size of a man's hand would deliver abundant downpouring rain. Don't despair, despair and don't despise God has promised help. Don't you know He causes the deaf ear to hear? He makes flowers bloom in a barren desert. He makes water gush from rocks. He makes the clouds His chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He tells the dead, get up. He walks on water. And he calms tempestuous winds. He calls things that are not as though they are. He prepares us a table before us in the very presence of our enemies. And yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is there with us. He anoints our head with oil and our cups run, run over and surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life and guess what we'll dwell in the church we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever here's what I want you to know we're about to pray matter of fact I feel prompted right now to just invite you and then tell this story if you're here today while heads are bowed and you know I've preached to you, you know it you know your vision's not big enough or maybe you're already stumbling, you're already flailing and I'm trying to tell you you're unstoppable I'm telling you that we are the church unstoppable because we have God unstoppable and I'm telling you we can go forward, but the devil has got you believing that you've hit a brick wall and you can't do anything else. That you've reached the end of the rope. You're here today and he's hoodwinked you into believing that you've been stopped and that, that you cannot go any further. I, I want to encourage you to come down with me right now. Come on, just, just find a way. God bless you, brother. There's others. Come on, God bless you. Don't let the devil cheat you out of this. Listen, I'm not going to grab you and shake you and throw you down. I just want to pray for you. Let the Lord do all of that.
Oh, I'm going to give you a moment. Say something for me, Adam. Would you sing something for me right now? Just 